talk about conservation of angular problems. Problems that include the fact that uh, when things collide with each other, uh, you have to sometimes conserve angular momentum. Conservation of angular momentum. Now the conservation of angular momentum is based on the same theory that the conservation of linear momentum is. Remember in chapter 9, we argued for the conservation of linear momentum. We said that uh, if the impulse J, which was defined as integral of F dt, is changing linear momentum. So we said that when two objects collide, if during their collision you can ignore external forces on the system, such as friction, or if you're hitting something and uh, if you're hitting a tree, we said, <coughs> linear momentum is not conserved because the tree has an external force. The roots are grounded into the ground, you know. But if you're hitting an object and that object is free to move, and if friction can be ignored, we said that linear momentum is conserved. So the idea was that if during the collision, external forces on the system can be ignored or they're minimal, then the impulse on the system during the collision is zero. Then the momentum is conserved. Not the momentum of each individual object is conserved, but the momentum of the system is conserved. You see? So therefore, momentum final total must be equal to momentum initial total. OK? Well, the same idea will go true for angular momentum. So in chapter 11, we can make a similar argument. We can say, Rotational impulse is defined as uh, torque times dt. So replace the f by the torque. And this one we're going to define as rotational impulse. Uh, I believe they also use j, but I'm not exactly 100% sure if what the letter for that is. We can say rotational impulse is torque dt. And we can say that's equal to change in angular momentum, right? And we can say if during a collision, external torques are ignored or they're minimal, then therefore the angular momentum total must equal to angular momentum uh, initial total. You see? So then the angular momentum of the system is conserved. Okay. Now you don't necessarily need to have a collision type problem to conserve angular momentum. It doesn't always have to be a collision. For example, it could be something like this. Let's say um, let's say you are in uh, outer space, okay? And let's say you happen to have uh, two people here. This is a, let, let's do this problem. This is a good one. This will, we'll call this example one. So let's say this is a 100 kilogram person and this is a 60 kilogram person. And the distance between them is equal to uh, six meters, okay? And let's say that they're, these are two astronauts in outer space. They have a rope attached. They're holding, it, they're holding the rope. They both are holding the rope. And let's say they are rotating 
around their common center of mass. Okay, their common center of mass is going to be closer to this guy, right? Right there. They're rotating around their common center of mass in outer space. And let's say their initial rotation period, rotational rate, is given. And let's say it's 2 rads per second. Maybe they're working on something, fixing the International Space uh, Ship or something. So they're rotating. One person is doing this, one person is doing that. Okay, and then the, all of a sudden they decide they have to move away from each other. So they, they release the rope. Or they could do the opposite. They could pull the rope in. They could get together, okay, and have, they have to do something or whatever. If they release the rope, their distance is going to get bigger and their rotation rate has to slow down, right? If they, uh, if they come together, then the distance is going to get closer and they have to speed up. This is the idea of conservation of angular momentum. Okay? So notice there's no collision happening here. So you don't need a collision problem to conserve angular momentum. So let's say they release the rope so that their final distance between them, let's call it D, the final distance is uh, 15 meters. The, now the problem can ask you, find the final angular velocity. How fast are they moving? OK? So that's a good problem, right? We have to use the fact that their angular momentum is conserved. In this case, you have no linear momentum per se, because the system is not translating. Now, each person has a linear momentum. They're going this way, and the other person is coming this way, you see? They're spinning. So each person has linear momentum, but the system has angular momentum, like this, you see? So um, let's see here. We need to first find the center of mass of the system, right? in order to be able to do anything else. So uh, where is their center of mass? Well, I could put the, my x, y axis here. And now we get to use chapter 9. Remember how we learned how to find the center of mass of a system. So uh, x center of mass is equal to, uh, well, this one will be right at the uh, origin. So it will be 60 times. Uh, the distance is 6 divided by the total mass of the system, 160. So this shows you why one of the reasons why it is good to be able to get the center of mass of a system. You, know, you want to know where the system is going to rotate around. So that's uh, 360 divided by 160, uh, 2 point what? 40 over uh, 2.25, right? OK, so now I'm going to use the fact that the angular momentum of the system, L initial total, needs to equal L final total. Now, L initial total is? We use the formula for angular momentum, I omega, right? I initial total times omega initial equals to uh, L final total is I final total omega final. OK? So I initial total is the angular momentum of the system initially. So what is the angular momentum of the system? Well, they're rotating about that point, right? So this thing, you can treat the person as a point object, OK? Unless you want to treat the person as a cylinder, you know. But uh, assume at this point that for the purposes of this problem, the, the, uh, the person is not that big compared to the distance. So the, you can consider the person as like a point object. The moment of inertia is going to be m, m times d squared, right? So uh, 100 times this distance squared, 